Hello, my name is Alex, and welcome to Alex's Reviews. For any of you who haven't been to the channel or haven't seen any of my videos yet, today we'll be reviewing the book The Walking Dead by Robert Kirkman, and this is Compendium 2, which is a whole the later chapters and the most recent one he's put out so far. Um, they also have a show called The Walking Dead on AMC, American Movie Channel. Don't know what channel it would be on in your area. For me, it's 25. Anyway, I really like this book. Like I said in the first one, if you haven't seen the first review that I put out for Compendium 1, then stop this video now. Not right now, wait till after I'm done saying this part. But go back to the channel and click on the one for Compendium 1 and watch that, then come back to this one. Alright, so this one, Compendium 2, continues the story of Rick Grimes and his son Carl after the jail was overrun by the zombies by the governor of his army after his wife and newborn child died um, and after they thought a whole bunch of their own friends and people in their groups died and at the beginning of it Rick and Carl are trying to survive they go through houses and scout for food Rick falls ill for a little while he's like sick can't get up can barely talk he's all sweaty and stuff and Carl thinks for a minute that he dies and in the book they discover if you die, you automatically turn into one of the zombies. So he was getting ready to shoot his dad, and he was crying. He was saying, like, he was mentally building himself up, saying, I don't need you. I can live without you, blah, blah, blah. And then he doesn't do it. He's like, I can't do it. And he says, I'm scared. He finally admits he's scared. And throughout the book, like, Carl's, like, has this different mentality than in the first book. Like, he has to, like, take care of himself. He saw his mother and his little sister die. Like, all this stuff changes people in the book. They go over that in both the first compendium and this one. They talk about how like, people change, people become crazy, evil, more violent, so many crazy things. And one day, after Rick gets better, they scout through these houses, and in one of the houses, a telephone rings, and they thought all the telephones and stuff were done, like they wouldn't work, and he, Rick picks it up, and on the other line of the phone is this other group of survivors. They were considering taking Rick and Carl, but they were taking too long to trust them because it gets hard to trust for people during this time because all these people would become evil, crazy. They shoot other people. They want to take over other people's house. They just want to take it or run. Um, but they take too long to, t to tell Carl and Rick where they are. So Carl, so Rick unplugs the telephone, and he decides to leave. And right before he leaves, the phone rings again, but the phone's unplugged. And he picks it up, and it's his wife, Lori, his dead wife. Lori. She answers the phone and starts talking to him. And it's not really her talking, it's just in his head what he thinks she would say. And if you see me look down, I just want to put out, I have my little handy dandy notes, that's what I'm looking at. No script or anything, just little key points. Anyway, so after that part, he takes the phone with him, puts it in his bag, because he needs some sort of line to his wife after she died. And him and Carl go on, and they meet up with some people that they used to be in their groups that they thought were dead. They didn't know if they lived or not because they just ran away because he just wanted to make sure his son lived through all that. And they meet up with new people. They meet up with old people. They meet up uh, with Morgan in the first book who actually saved Rick's life after he woke up out of the coma. Review number one. Anyway, meet up with him. They meet up with Michonne, the girl from the first book. I didn't describe her in the review, so make sure you get that book if you haven't read it already. And they meet up with a whole bunch of other people from their old groups. Not as many as there used to be because a lot of them died, sadly. Aww. Anyway, and they meet up with new people, including Abraham, Eugene, and Rosita, who are a three-person group going to D.C. Because Eugene says that in D.C., people there, they know how to stop this, why they created it. And he pretend and he, okay, I'm going to admit this right now, he pretended to be someone who knew all about this. But he was actually just a science teacher, and he admits later on in the book, like, he had to lie about it, otherwise he wouldn't have lived, he wouldn't have been able to stay with these group. Because all he was, he was smart, like really smart, but he didn't have combat skills, he wasn't a good leader, he couldn't get by in his books, he wasn't a sharpshooter. And he like points to other people in the group. And that's the only way he survived. But anyway. And that's and Rick starts interacting with all these people and they get to this new community. And it's has walls, it has food. They have all the guns in one shed area because they want to make sure not everyone's carrying one because it would cause problems. And like they have houses, they have water, they have electricity, they have solar panels and stuff. And 
they like they can't believe it. They can't, they thought it was a dream, and they were invited into the group, and they started living there. A few stuff went wrong, and Rick became the basically the police officer of that group because the leader initially told him to be that. Like he was like, "What did you do before all this happened?" He was like, "I'm a police officer. Great, we need one. You're it." And then the leader dies, and then Rick assumes the position. And then other things are happening. Like the walls get overrun after, like, before the leader dies, it gets overrun. And Rick takes care of it, and he's with the group, and he decides, "Oh wow, we're actually we just killed all those zombies. We can refix this all, and we did it all together." Like he used to fear being with, not fear, but he didn't trust being with a whole bunch of people. He always just thought, "I need to keep my family alive." He had the mentality of just keeping him and his family alive, and not like the other people. Like, yeah, he wanted to keep them alive, but he didn't think he really needed them. Now he's like, "Wow, if I have this whole group here." I have better chance to survive and better chance for my kid to survive. And then throughout the rest of the book, certain things happen. They meet other people. And I'm not going to ruin that part for you. So if it seems interesting, read that book. Like I said, good book. I liked it. I'm a little enthusiastic about it right now. I'm smiling. Anyway, so yeah, Walking Dead, Compendium 2, Robert Kirkman. Really good book. It like leads to a lot of the zombie things, but it has its own different mentality to it. Because a lot of them, they just talk about wasting zombies, group of people shooting them all in one spot. This one goes over like survival and how they thought towards all this stuff. So I found that really cool. So that's how it connects and doesn't connect with some other the zombie stuff that happens. Like or has been written or filmed. I like zombie stuff. I'm not gonna lie. But not many of this stuff relates to me, but it makes me think about like what would I do in this situation? How would I survive? I already have my zombie escape plan. Some of you already do. I know. Anyway, thank you for watching this review this book sounds interesting or this was interesting you want to review it and send it to other people then do it sorry this one went on a little bit longer it's a pretty thick book and i went a little in depth with it all right thank you for coming to my review bye bye have a nice day